today I'm going to be working on this dwarf Hinoki Cypress. It's a Camacypris obtuser and it's one that's been imported from Japan a year or so ago. It looks like it hasn't been trimmed for years. The foliage here is excessively dense, very, very dense foliage. So this really is due a trim or a thin out. Okay, so today I'm back in the studio with this uh, dwarf Hinoki Cypress that I've been working on for the last few days. And part one of this video we released about a week ago and this tree was very, very dense and I've spent, probably spent three to four hours with scissors pruning the top of this tree to get it to this sort of density so we can see the structure, the ramification and the beauty of this tree, we can now see it. Whereas before, it was so dense, it was almost hiding itself. And we discussed in part one about the tree being a front towards you, but we discussed tilting it over in this sort of manner. So that these sections here, these upper trunks, weren't as much of a catapult formation, but were dropped over more. We'd also discussed about these branches um, and doing some carving or something like that on it. Now at the moment, and what I'm gonna do in this section, I'm gonna carve it and we're gonna position the branches. I've wired most of the branches, there are a few that I haven't done, but I think we've wired enough to get the image that we need to create with this particular tree. And we discussed before, these branches here that are on it, these have been lost or been cut back in uh, previous years. There's a few deadwood areas, a few gins here that want tidying up if we want to keep them. These aren't too bad, I suppose, they're fairly inoffensive. They tell a little bit of a story, but this great big one here, this is going to be coming straight towards the front of the tree as a viewer. So I don't think this is going to add anything to the tree. I'm looking to take this off, maybe carve a hole in here instead. And then this one here on this side, same with that. I'm going to remove that. I might keep some of this and carve it down. But I'm going to take, start by taking these two off altogether. So I'm going to use my little mini chainsaw for that. So if I can get in there with this... Yeah, it's going to reduce most of it with a chainsaw. There we go, that's that one off. And the same for this one here. This is actually easier to get into this one. I'll get right up against the trunk, nice and neatly. Same with that, remove that from the tree altogether. So now this is a better movement on this side, not interrupted by that stub there at all. And then we can do something with this. So we've got another one at the back of the tree that I don't really think I need. I'm gonna take that one off as well. So that will be the third one to come off. Like so, that was easy. And then if you look, on this next section up the tree, there's a little bit of deadwood here, a little channel just here. And then this is all callus, where it's, the scar tissue has developed and it's callous in on these two edges. Now, I'm in two minds. There's two ways we can go with this. We, can, we could extend this deadwood here and we could channel this out more and bring an element of deadwood down here to connect up to this gin. My only reservation with doing that, or consideration with doing that, say this here is about an inch thick, and it's obviously it's brown, it's got bark on it. If we put some deadwood up here, visually it will lighten this up, but it won't visually lighten this section up, which is still that thick. So I don't want to put too much deadwood here, but it might be worth just tickling a little river of deadwood through here, just to give interest and to join up with this section up in here. So we're gonna try doing that, and we're going to do some work on these other sections, a little bit of carving. And we'll start off by using a Makita die grinder with a bonsai carving bit in it. Um, so it's a bit more of a heavy duty tool than a sort of Dremel type tool. And we're gonna to start to try and map this out if we can and see where we go from there.
initial bit of carving we've elongated that circular uh, flat where we've taken that stub off for off before we've made it a little bit deeper we've brought a little fissure of dead wood down here we've connected up to this gin here a little bit more work to do on this and then we brought it up through here just to tell a story to fill in to emphasize that twist that movement up to this section where it was before so I'm going to use a little bit of a wire bush now on some of these other gins to tidy them up and onto this one as well. In this fight for new life, I can't help but feel right. Let's break free from these chains we have grown. A new space, the much of the system in place. Where melody and reggae music's high, Let's shut down the rhythm and shake. We need change, need change. So turn up the drums and bass. If you don't like it, you can get out our way. Let's shut down the rhythm and shake. A jank, a jank, jank. So finished carving this front section with a Makita. And then we followed up with a wire brush to put sort of a very coarse wire brush to put some texture and some grain into this. We've opened up this for sure of Deadwood, the Shari running up here, following the movement of the tree. One thing we talked about in the first part was that as we tilt the tree, this branch on the left-hand side would lift up and we'd need to pull it down. So I'm gonna put a little guy wire on this to pull it down. I've left a little piece of wire here, so that when I've wired it, I've got a gap beneath the wire. I'm just gonna put a little screw into the back of the trunk. Now, I don't really like putting screws into the back of trees and I avoid it at all costs. But the only reason I'm doing it in this instance is that it's the most discreet way to pull this down because I can pull it down from here to that screw head. And from the front, you won't see it. It saves me putting cushion in and and other apparatus around this trunk and it saves me pulling it all the way down to to the bottom somewhere so i can take that piece of wire out there that was my marker and then we'll get a piece of uh, just a piece of one and a half mil wire and we don't need to cushion it on the top there we can just put it through the wire like so and then we're going to bring it down and just tie it off Like that. So it's just pulling that wire down under there. And then with a pair of bonsai pliers, look, we can just grip that, pull it down further, like that, to start to bring this branch down. We can hold this branch down with one hand and just take up that slack like that to here. And then once we've put a little bit of tension on that, we can tuck that end ever so nice, nice and neat into there. We might even now be able to just snip that up a little bit more. And then we'll get a piece of heavier wire, like a three mil, just put it in that mid section 
here with that little wire and just start to twist just to pull this one this branch tighten this wire up shortening it and pulling this branch down a little bit more very controlled way of doing a guy wire nice and neat and discreet so that's bringing that branch down really quite easily so we'll, we'll finish it off for there for now so if i turn it around to the front so what we'll do now is i'll get this raised back up on a table and uh, i'll clean off uh, some of the dust and i'll come back around that side and we'll do the final branch placement of this tree okay so now we're down to the final furlong of working on this tree which is just the positioning of the branches now we've done the carving and we've tidied it up we're back up to on this table so i've got a plain background to work with and we said before didn't we, we we're going to tilt it up so from here we're going to get the tree and the new planting position of it is going to be somewhere like that tilted up towards you we've managed to bring this branch down a little bit let's see if we can get the others to fall into place and look a bit more organized so we'll start off with this right hand side here and we'll start off with a branch like this this foldage pad wants to be down and forward a little bit more and then this one some of these that i've wired we can just coax into position down into here to fill in a little bit more this one there's a bit of a gap this just wants to come down so just a bit of manipulation on a few of these here look just to make these fall into place it's been a joy to work on this tree it's been quite well behaved you know wiring it it's quite flexible it's coming to uh, it's coming into quite a nice shape with minimal sort of minimal sort of fuss so this one on this back edge this can just be moved down a little bit to fill in here this section that's hanging down can come off move this one in a little bit like this as we get down to here a bit more manipulation on this branch to bring this down these are quite old branches so i'm trying to do it do it gently bit at a time down into here and open this up this section like that this one down into here i'm just sitting on top of that these other two foldage pads this is pretty well organized turn it around to the front and let's just have a look at a little look with a, a pair of scissors for some of these longer shoots that are growing down some of these can be snipped off on the underside and some of these are a little bit long we can shorten back a little bit in here that wants to be under control this little section this is coming down a little bit too much on that very tip a little bit under here this is just a little bit heavy this is a little bit long here and this stuff here this bit growing up too much i say we've we've probably took about 30 to 40 percent of the foliage off this tree which in, it was inevitable because it was so massively overgrown before we started you know it's the it's always the task is to take off what you don't need but for it not to look like you've been cutting big sections out of the tree and this tree still looks very full and it's still got a good amount of density to it you know it doesn't look like we've plucked all the foliage off it but it has at the same time lightened it up so we can see the structure of the tree which with with this tree as we always said that was the beauty of this tree the movement in these trunks and the ramification movement in these branches through here is a testament to its age and really adds to the style of it so now with this tree we've got the front in here towards you and because now at this time of year we're sort of the end of june time in the uk it's not really a good time to repot this tree so the next job to do on this tree probably autumn time would be to do a repot and alter this angle of the tree either within this pot or within a new specially chosen bonsai container and last job i've got to do is just to put some lime sulfur on this dead wood uh, i'll leave this for now give it a couple of days exposed like this 
then I will paint these gins and shari with a lime sulfur solution, which will bleach it white and, and make it look more like aged deadwood and an old tree in nature. So from the start, this has been quite a nice process of working on this tree. It's been on the nursery for a number of months. I've been waiting to sort of get my hands on it and have a go on it. And in spring, we're so busy working on other types of trees, maples and deciduous trees. It's been good. Uh, now we're not quite so busy to get round to working on this. And I'm glad I've waited to work on it. And it's really shaped up very nicely. It's all together, it's probably had about uh, five to six hours of work on it since I started part one of this video. Please give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Plenty more videos in the pipeline coming up, requests from people of what they want us to do and ideas that we've got. So give us a subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of the new videos. And I hope you've enjoyed this two part Cyprus video. Make sure if you haven't, you check out the first part and thank you very much.